What's going on guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to create a retro vintage 80s style text inside DaVinci Resolve. Let's get into it. Now I have done a few retro style titles inside DaVinci Resolve. If you guys have not seen those tutorials, I'll link them up here or in the description below. However, Patrick Sterling reached out to me and asked if I'd like to collab with him. He created this really cool 80s retro style background and asked if I would create a really cool title to go along with it. So that's what I'm gonna be teaching you guys today. Let's jump inside DaVinci Resolve and we'll get going. So the first thing you guys are gonna need is a fusion composition. Uh, the easy way to get this is go to the effects library under the effects toolbox. Uh, we're gonna grab a fusion composition, drag it down. Now these are automatically gonna just be five seconds long. Patrick made his composition 15 seconds, so I'm gonna match his by just dragging it out to 15 seconds and matching what he has done. Then we're gonna hop inside a fusion, once we're inside Fusion, you can see we've just got our media out. I'm gonna move that out of the way, unclick off of that. We're gonna add a text. Uh, and then here, we are gonna go ahead and hit number one on my keyboard so I can see it. I'm gonna go ahead and type in retro, because I think it's pretty easy, that's what we're going for. Uh, we are gonna find a text that we like. Tweak a few things when you find the font that you like. I'm gonna space the tracking out just a little bit, mess with the size here just a bit. Now, before I start animating anything on the titles, I like to go ahead and mess with the color, whether I'm going to make it be inverted and just be the outline or whatever I'm gonna do. I like to do that first before I start animating anything. So under the inspector, under properties, where it says solid, I'm actually gonna do gradient. Uh, and in here, we can start messing with kind of that 80s style gradient that was on titles. I normally leave just the black and white that's on there. If you wanna add more, click on the color and it will add another one. I'm gonna add a few in here and I'm gonna start tweaking with some colors. I think the first one, we're just gonna do black around the corners, whether they show or not, just in case, that way it's got a little bit of fade to it. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and mess with this one right here. Let's do uh, a pink, I think that looks pretty good. Uh, this one over here, let's go ahead and do maybe a purple, maybe a little bit lighter of a purple. I'm gonna add another purple, maybe a little bit darker. Uh, you're really just kind of tweaking with things. You can grab actually the white or any color and move it and it'll really start to give you cool effects and different styles. Again, this really isn't, I've written the Bible on it, just find what looks good for you guys. I like to just toy around with it till I find I think what looks good and what I'm really happy with and really fits the style of the video I'm going for. Now we're gonna hop back inside the text page and start keyframing this. I'm gonna go to the 60th frame because I feel like that's a pretty good spot for this video. Uh, we are gonna go to the tracking. I'm gonna add a keyframe on that on the 60th frame. I'm gonna go back to frame number one and I am going to space it out to what I think looks good. Now we're gonna go to the layout button and we're gonna go to rotation. I'm gonna grab the Z and we are going to rotate this. Before we do that command Z real quick, I'm gonna add a keyframe on 60 also, just the same, go back to the beginning, and we are going to turn this about 90 degrees. Uh, that way it kind of rotates in as it's spacing in as well. If you want to smooth things out, we can go to the spline tool and I kind of recommend doing this as you go. You can save this to the end, but sometimes it's a little bit easier going inside and just smoothing out the things you need before you get a bunch on there. Let's click on the text and let's highlight both of these on the Z and we will just smooth it out right there. Um, that looks pretty good. We will make sure the character spacing is also the same. We'll smooth it out. Even if it's not dramatic, it sometimes will help just ease it in a little bit better. Let me get rid of the spline for a little bit. Now I'm gonna have this zoom in. And again, it's sometimes easier working backwards. So I'm going to go to the 60th frame again. We're gonna go ahead and add a keyframe before doing it at the beginning. It's sometimes it's just a lot easier working backwards. So we're gonna go to center Z on layout. We'll go to the very beginning and then we will size it up from there. Uh, if you did this the opposite way, it would be hard to bring it back to that correct size. I am gonna move the offset over so it's kind of right in the center here. We'll drag that up and down kind of right there is pretty good. Play that through, see how that looks. That looks good other than it's ending off frame. 
So to fix that, I'm just gonna go ahead and add a keyframe on the center X uh, on the 60 frame and at the beginning. Pretty easy on this one. I just know it needs to be 0.5% to be spot on. That's looking pretty good, but the 80 stuff is very over the top, very, I don't know, special graphics, but really isn't that great of graphics. So I want to duplicate this. Now, instead of copying it and pasting it, the easiest way to do this is we're gonna hit shift space bar on a Mac. It's gonna bring our selection tool up and we are going to look for duplicate. That's what we need right there. We're gonna add it. It's automatically gonna link the two, so I'm gonna hit number two on my keyboard so we can see it on the second screen. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start messing with things, and this is really where you start to just have fun and find what looks good to you. So under copies inside our inspector, I'm gonna crank this up to like seven and a half. Uh, we are going to mess, nope, not pivot, that's not what I want. We're gonna mess with center, and we're gonna drag this out. Um, kinda liking that, that's pretty cool. I'm gonna size it up a little bit. That actually looks really dope. Now I'm gonna mess with my pivot and I'm gonna slide it over so it kind of centers it. Yeah, I think that's looking pretty good. Now I want to have it actually kind of echo back towards itself. I'm thinking dragging the copies down will kind of do that style that I'm going for. So everything has been based around our 60 frame mark. So we're gonna kind of just aim it around there. Uh, I'm actually gonna go to frame 75. I'm gonna add a keyframe, uh, and then we are gonna also add a keyframe on the blend, as well as the size and the time offset. Also, before I forget, I want to change the apply mode to lighten. Uh, it's just a personal taste of mine. You can mess with different ones if you like. Um, being on frame 60 now, let's go ahead and add another keyframe on blend. I'm also gonna go ahead and add a keyframe to the others we did on frame 60. Now I'm gonna go back to keyframe 75 and we're gonna turn down the copies as well as turning down the blend. I'm actually gonna uncheck blend on 75 and we're gonna go to 80 and now turn it down. That way you can see the copies are rippling down before it completely fades out. So what I like to do occasionally is I like to go into the spline tool because you can really mess with things. Uh, we're gonna hit the little arrow to make this all be able to see it basically. Uh, and in here we can shut off the text because we really don't need that. Uh, we're really just doing everything in the duplicator. Uh, and here I want to smooth out the duplicate. I don't really need the size or the time offset, so I'll get rid of those. Um, I've already done the copies, but I definitely need to do the blend as well, and we will smooth that out also. We can really kind of pull it and make it more dramatic, uh, especially because that's just the style we're going for right now. I think it'll kind of just help it be a little bit more weird, which is what we're going for. Once we're done, you can shut that off, get rid of the spline. Nine out of 10 times, I'm really just messing with certain steps of keyframes and just finding out what I like, what seems right. There's really no right or wrong way when it comes to this kind of stuff, guys. You can follow my tutorial step-by-step step exactly. I really intend it though for you kind of to just look at it and create something that's your own inspired by what I'm doing. Once we got that all done, we're gonna hop back into the text, and I do not like how the text just sits there, so I want to have it kind of fade even bigger, kind of zoom in a little more, so we're gonna hop back into the text page of the inspector. I'm gonna add a keyframe on size on keyframe 60, then I'm gonna scroll all the way down to like 330, and I'm gonna crank the size way up. Now normally titles like this, I would do some kind of animation out, but because this is a retro like 80s style, it kind of just seems like the whole thing would fade to black. That's just what they would go for. I do want to do one last thing. So I'm going to hit shift space bar on the text. I am going to look for glow. I'm going to add that. It's going to drop it inside of our node tree. Uh, we're going to go in here. And we're going to kind of tweak a few things. You can go ham on all of these nodes, of course. Again, tweaking, making every style your own. Um, I'm gonna kind of turn down the glow size, maybe mess with the blend just a little bit. Really, I'm just finding what works for me. I think overall, I'm happy with that. It seems to fit the style I'm going for. Now, the last thing I wanna do is I am going to add a merge so we can link this to anything else. 
because this is two different tutorials that kind of go together, one of the easiest ways to do it is start with Patrick's create the background, then create a new fusion composition, copy all these nodes of mine and paste it inside of his. So if you watch this tutorial, you can actually do everything on his. You can bring mine in by hitting command V after copying it. You can paste it. We'll bring it right in here and it will drop it right on top. You don't have to do anything else. It doesn't mess up any of the tutorial he did on his side. You can see here that the text is actually has textures coming through and it looks really good together. There you go, guys. That's how you create a retro style title inside DaVinci Resolve. If you guys like this video, definitely go check out Patrick's video. I will link it up here in the description below that will teach you how to do that background that works with it hand in hand. They really are kind of designed for each other. So if you're wanting to up your game even more with that retro 80s style, I definitely recommend going and checking out his video. Go show him some love. Say I sent you. Uh, you guys are amazing. If you like this video, do all the things like comment, share, subscribe, ring the bell, whatever you're wanting to do or don't, you know, it's your life. I'll see you guys next time. I'm the Iron Giant. Peace.